My father was Alan. Alan. My grandfather was Ben. I'm, I'm third generation. I'm Mark Cantor. I'm right. third generation Cantor family. We're run by the third and fourth generation. My, gr my grandfather, Ben Cantor, worked about 50 years, starting in 1951. And my father started in the you know, early 50s, he worked about 65 years. I started in 1982, I've been here 38 years now. So, you know, and my kids work here and my cousins work here and my sister works here. So, you know, it's, it's family run. Um, well, well I, I was honestly, I, what, I probably would have ended up here no matter what, but what really happened was in the summer of the 11th grade, my dad put me to work uh, actually behind uh, working as a busboy just to, you know, have something to do. And a couple weeks later, I picked up fry cooking. And then about mm, a month later, I made a vacation for someone. And then they stuck me in the deli. OK, so when I, what really happened, about three months into that, my father injured his back. And he was in traction. He was out for two or three months. And all of a sudden, all his responsibilities just dropped on me. And anything that, that he was supposed to do would fall on me. And people would come and ask me questions that they'd normally ask him. So. By the time he came back, I was already in and, and, and juggling, you know, juggling nine balls in the air. So I never really looked back. That was the end of that. I finished one more year of high school and, and uh, there are things to do. Tell me about being at the deli all your life. I mean, uh, what's it like? Well, you, you know, you come in and, and, and they give you a little job to do. And then on your way to do that little job, someone stops you and tells you about another job that needs to be done. And then. So you think which is more important, then you pick the whichever one is more important, and then on the way to finish that, they give you a third job, and then the phone rings. And so really, before you know it, it's time to go home, and, and, and you did like 100 things. So that's what it is. A deli is a lot of, you know, it's a lot of love and, and blood, sweat, and tears. It's, a, it's just a lot to do. There's a lot of labor. There's, this place is huge. It's, almost 30,000 square feet, 25,000 square feet. So 160 employees, there's just a lot to- And that, you're here every day? For pretty much. I try to take Monday or Tuesday off, and, but there's always uh, something that comes up that maybe I don't work full days those days, but I still come in and do some things. Now, do you have siblings? Uh, I do, my sister. So she's here too? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So we all do our part to, to make it work. For people who haven't been here, there's very few, but for people who haven't been here, what makes Cantor's such an L.A. institution? There are so many things here that make Cantor special. Uh, you know, I'll give you a slogan that we came up with. Cantor's is a place where grandkids bring their grandkids, meaning that when they were four or five, their grandparents brought them here, and now they're bringing their kids and their grandkids here. So that's how long people have been coming here. It's just because, you know, we're here. And the food is good and the atmosphere is fun and, you know, there's things that we do that not too many people can really do. Some of the items on the menu, they're, they're special, they stick out. And, you know, we have a full bakery upstairs, we double bake our rye breads, and make the black and white cookies and every, all this stuff, the arugula and the bakery case and the cheesecake, it's all made by hand. It's all handmade, so it's not like you're buying things from, you know, a, a, a purveyor and opening up the package and serving it. We're, you know, we're making it. So, uh, you know, when you put that kind of effort into it and you got a fa the same family running it for, you know, close to 90 years now, there's, you know, something to that. And then you have, on the other hand, you have employees that have been here 50 years, 40 years, 30 years. I mean, more than 50 of them have been here, you know, more than 20, 30 years. So they kind of, it's their home too, you know, everyone does. They know what to do. We're not turning over staff, so it's like an institution. Well, one, at one time you were known for really funny waiters, right? Acerbic waiters? Well, uh, more so. I mean, they'll tell you some jokes and they'll tell you, you know, Delhi's supposed to have the kind of, what are you going to have? You know, that kind of thing. Oh, you want croutons? And they take your crackers and bang them. Here's your croutons, you know, for your soup instead of saying, oh, you know, we don't have the fancy croutons that go in salads but you could use crackers. They'll just literally take a package of crackers and smash it and say, here, croutons. So <laughs> it, there's a sense of humor, I guess, when they're taking your order. But, you know, there's a lot of uh, old decor around here that's never changed since the dinosaurs roamed. So people like that. They like to come in and, and look up at the ceiling and see the autumn ceiling. And they like to look at the glass plates that have been here. They're Higgins, a special glass over there. 
been here since 1959. So it, there's, it's kind of like a time machine, you know, nothing really changes. But, and, but in, uh, in the end, you know, we make our own pickles, we make our own soups, we make, everything's made here. So it, it, it's home, it's really home cooked food. Uh, I'm, some of the other delis I've been to, the audience is very older. Uh, here I'm seeing an interesting mix. You get a lot of young people here. How do you explain it? It's a very diverse crowd here, especially in the last 10 years. Fairfax has changed. Uh, the skateboarders took over the neighborhood, and, and uh, uh, so there's there's a lot going on. But it's still there's. To be honest with you, even before the skateboarders took over, you know, ever since I've been here, there's always been a pretty good mix of, of you know, young people, old people, middle people, Generation X, you know, millennials, whatever you want to call it. Uh, it, it Canners has a really good mix, and you get a lot of people that, when they find out I'm from Canners, they say, oh, I met my spouse at Canners. Well, how did you do that? Because, you know, after like the 20th or 30th time I've heard that, tell me, how does, I mean, were you there eating? I mean, w turns out that they pick Canners as a place to go on a first date. It's a good neutral place. But there has been a few incident, instances where they actually did meet at Canners by accident. How, how do you explain you're able to stay open and still thrive and so many delis have been closing? How is it, why is it still working here? Because we own the property and we're willing to donate the property for the business because that's, if we were paying rent, it would be another story. It, it, you know, it just, deli costs are higher than any other. The food cost is higher, the labor is higher. And it, it's just, it, the, you need more space and more equipment to, to manufacture the, that, that, that stuff. and it, it's just, it's not, a, it doesn't work economically. So, like if we were run by a computer, they'd say liquidate, you know, because it doesn't make sense to keep all this property to run this business. But we do it because we, we've, we've always done it and we always will do it because that's, that's what we do, you know. And Gina and Alex will run the place one day or? Uh, I'm hoping that my kids will, my kids, Gina and Alex will, will you know, my, sis, my daughters, and actually they're both involved. But they're not here on, on a you know forty hour a week basis, right. so but they definitely have their input and Gina runs that you know the social media and my son and I worked on the menu for six months in 2012. I mean that was a big ordeal, uh, re, you know revamping the menu a little bit. Uh, but there's been a lot of projects that you know I work on with my kids that that. Um, but as far as you know replacing me when I'm too old to do it or I'm gone. That's going to be a task. I mean, at that, at, 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 well, I'm, I'm hoping I can give it another 20 or 30 years, but um, at that point, something's gonna, a decision's going to have to be made to probably downsize a little bit because I don't think anybody in their right mind would do the things that it takes to actually keep this monster of, of a machine going. Tell me about the food. What, do you have a favorite sandwich here? I think the Reuben's our favorite sandwich. Uh, I have many favorite sandwiches because I, I'm here every day, so uh, sometimes you gotta get creative, and that's how things get invented and end up on the menu. You, you take brisket, you know, you like brisket, but you've only, you know, you had brisket tw you know, 12 ways and you start to get tired of it, so you look for more ways. What can we do with the brisket? Well, we could throw it in a panini press and with uh, some Russian dressing and coleslaw and egg bread and you know, a little monster cheese and see what happens and you get a whole new brisket monster. So, or you could kind of cut it up and throw some onion gravy, mix it in a bowl, put it with, uh, you know, uh, monster cheese and, and grill it. And then all of a sudden you get like a brisket dinner kind of a taste uh, with the gravy and everything. And, but it's different than a brisket dinner, but it's somewhere, you know, it, it's, uh, it's in the family of it. So you, you get, you find, you find ways to take items you have and make them fresh again or new. Uh, we've also added, uh, we have a, corn beef, a vegan corned beef pastrami now. Uh, and that's, you know, we've had that a couple months and that's really good because the people that can't eat meat anymore or, or vegetarians have been, you know, that gives them another option to have that deli flavor uh, and, and they're not really eating the meat, so. That, that, that seems to make a big splash, too. Now, there have been a bunch of articles about the hot pastrami at Langer's, and they say they've got the best. When you read that, what do you think? Well, Langer's does have a good pastrami, but uh, our, I'm not going to say whose is better. They're a little different. They're both very good. They're both very good. Uh, theirs is a little saltier. Ours is a little bit sweeter. Uh, you know, I have no compl I like them both, to be honest with you. It's, it's like it's asking what, what kid you like better. 
you know, they're, they're your kids, they're both good. I, I give my stamp of approval on theirs and ours, I, but I, I can't say they're just a little different. And well, let me just say, the art of the deli. The deli needs to continue and thrive because? Uh, because it's in our blood. <laughs> uh, you know, it, it's, it, it's something I've always done, and, and there's a certain amount of pride in that. And you're doing something, you're keeping people working. There's 160 people that work here, and they're like family to me, uh, or at least most of them are. So it, it's just... It's, it's what I know what to do. It's, it's, how, it's what I know, you know. But I mean, outside of your personal connection, the, the, the deli should, can, when, when you're gone, 50 years from now, 60 years, whatever, I, 70 I, years, the deli should still be here because why? In 50 years from now, I'm hoping the deli is still here, but I, I promise you, it will be on a much smaller level. It will be, uh, it would be mainly, because the way, the way technology is moving, and everyone's ordering from their smartphones, you don't need a high capacity seating. You just need to be able to produce the food and, 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 and get it to the drivers who are going to take it to where they're going. But leaving, you know, people still want to come to Canners and sit down and enjoy that experience. There's something, you know, you can't just have all your food delivered to you. It's not quite the same. But it will be, it's just, I don't see who else could possibly put in the, the effort that it needs. And believe me, it needs a lot of effort to keep a place this size running. Uh, it just won't be economical. It, 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 won't, it won't work. In the, it won't work in 50 years from now. The only way it works is on a much smaller scale. Okay, well, I hope it's still here. Uh, Mark, thank you so much. Right, thank you.